Hello, friends. I wanted to come on today to talk about some of the ways that you can weave awareness into your daily life or integrate awareness. So it's very obvious, I think, that if you are here, you know how important bringing awareness into your life is. Awareness is the light that shines on all things to show you the truth of who you really are. It shows you what are the illusions in your life? What are the things that are holding you back energetically? What is keeping you in this world of duality where you can be an emotional roller coaster dominated by the mind's thoughts, the emotions that it brings, and the karmic wheel of I got it, I don't it, I feel good, I don't, I feel bad. Always, always the same thing, the same wheel of karma. So I wanted to share some some pointers that have worked for me, and uh, I'd like to open it up to, of course, this beautiful community. If you have anything to share that would be helpful for other people, that's really the purpose of this channel, is just to share what is kind of opening up for me in my daily life and my daily spiritual experiences. But it's not necessarily a channel only for spiritual topics. You know, you never know. I might be talking about regenerative farming one day. I don't know. Um, but I hope that you guys find these pointers helpful. And let's get started. So the first one is the idea of mindfulness or the practice of mindfulness. I talked about this in one of my videos uh, a couple of weeks ago where it's the fundamental superpower that we all have, but we sometimes forget. And it's talked about in many different uh, religions, uh, spiritual practices. And to me, it is one of the top things that you have to do in order to cultivate more awareness in your life. And it's actually a life-changing practice to live in the present moment. So it's just practicing bringing yourself into the present moment by, you know, either focusing on one thing or one task at a time or bringing my favorite, your senses to all things that surround you, your awareness to everything within your present moment. And what it does is it, it, uh, quiets the mind and it allows you to get in that space of stillness, that pocket of stillness, so that you are able to experience the magic and the all and the wonder of the present moment. And I personally like to do this in nature, but I believe that mindfulness should be integrated into every aspect of your life whether you are brushing your teeth, whether you are walking, whether you are talking to another individual, whether you are in nature, every moment is an opportunity to connect with your present moment. Whether you want to call that mindfulness or not, it's all about bringing your awareness to the present moment. All right, so that's uh, number one, and that is a big one, guys. Number two is this uh, self-inquiry. Now, you'll see this a lot in um, non-duality, uh, different videos or text. Um, Ramanaha Maharshi is really big on non-duality, self-inquiry. And essentially, you know, there are certain pointers that you can use to point yourself back to the source. And, uh, you know, you can ask yourself questions like, what is the nature of this moment? Who is experiencing in this moment? And, you know, who am I? What am I? There are different questions that you can ask to essentially do direct pointing to the nature of your true reality, which is what you are. You're the divine being. You are already whole. You are already complete. You are already self-realized. But all of us, we need to be pointed in that direction. At least I did. And I still do. I still need that pointing where sometimes I get lost in a little story over here or over here. And 
I get sucked into the world of duality based off of a limiting belief that I've had. And self-inquiry is a powerful tool in order to point you back to the direction of your true nature, of your true source. So there is um, an amazing guy. His name is Dan Danielle Smith, I believe, and he's based out of Canada. Um, he has a lot of amazing um, videos out on YouTube that he does for free. Uh, I have added his links into um, my video con uh, collection. But with regards to self-inquiry, he holds self-inquiry meditation sessions. And I'm going to link that so that you could check that out in his channel. Beautiful being. Uh, absolutely love his energy. You know, he just has this very calming effect when he speaks. The next one is, you know, compassion and empathy. So what do I mean by that? <sighs> what do I mean by that? <laughs> it means pulling in that true heart source into each and every moment and really being compassionate to uh, those that are around you and empathetic to those who are around you because you know that this human experience is very difficult. It's not easy being human. It's not easy when you're in this crazy world, sucked into this matrix of society is all looking at their phones, they're being poisoned by their food, and everybody's lost in their own minds and riding these crazy emotional roller coasters. So it's important to have deep compassion and empathy for every interaction that you have. And remember that in the end, there is no separate self. So when you interact with other beings or human beings, right? You can recognize the oneness in them by pulling in through the heart and being compassionate and being empathetic and understanding them from a soul to soul level and getting rid of that feeling of I am this separate individual and seeing everything as more of a unified field. So why wouldn't you have more compassion? Why wouldn't you be more empathetic to everyone that you encounter? Okay, so that's number three. Number four is meditation. Uh, you know, there was a period where I stopped meditating. And what I do now is I basically sit in stillness. That's what I feel. Um, I'm a longtime meditator, been meditating for about 20 years. And meditation is... Mm, Man, it, it really was the thing that sparked all of this off for me. I was in a very deep depression um, earlier in my 20s, and it came to a point where, you know, it was just something had to happen. And somehow meditation came into my lap. And what I noticed with meditation is I slowly was able to still the mind and make the mind quieter and quieter and access those pockets of stillness. And a lot of non-dualists will say, well, why are you meditating? And I say that don't put yourself in labels. I'm not labeling myself as a non-duality person. I figured out that that is not what I want to be labeled as. I think that whatever tool works for you, you need to use it. And meditation for me historically has been a powerful tool to still the mind, to quiet the mind, to access those pockets of stillness so that you're able to get in touch with your true nature and to let the light in, so to speak. I love this analogy of, you know, we're these human beings and we only have, you know, so much amount of energy. Let's just say that we're, um, we're a machine, right? And for most of us, meditating is like plugging in the machine into the universe and really getting in touch with our true nature so that we can be more 
peaceful, loving, and harmonious human beings. But in reality, once you get in touch with your true nature, you will realize that you already are all of that. And you don't have to meditate, but meditate. meditation is a very useful tool. And I'm not going to say that it's not. All right, so number five is nature. Whew, what can I say about nature? I am a huge fan of nature. Um, I love to ground, walk barefoot. I really don't like shoes very much. Um, I love to tap into the field of nature because I think nature is our greatest teacher of true connection and true oneness. We are nature. And you can find nature anywhere, whether you are in a rural town or you are in a large city. It's all about connecting to that harmonious field of nature and feeling yourself as part of all of this. And nature is healing, it's soothing, it's cleansing. And that connection to nature can change your life. It brings total awareness into your life. And so it's very important to connect with nature, at least on my path, multiple times a day, if not all the time, so that I am able to be one with nature and to feel that connection. Nature is where, for me at least, that's where stillness is. It's in the beauty and the awe and the wonder of nature. The last one I will say is letting go of the ego. Now, in a true sense, the ego is an illusion, right? But if we're going to call the illusion something, we're going to call it ego. And uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer, who was a, a, a great spiritual teacher, said that ego stands for edge God out. And I do believe that is very true. Basically, we have all grown up with our own beliefs, our perceptions, our stories, and we have formed this individual ego, so to speak. And the ego has certain preferences, it has certain beliefs, and it has certain programming that's in the mind about certain things that trigger certain emotions. And so it's up to us to bring awareness to this ego and these heavy identifications in order to let go and let God. Uh, and so that in itself is a very large topic. And I think that most of my videos touch on this. It's, it's a process of just bringing the awareness and then you see it as, you know, as an example, okay. Krista has this core belief of X, Y, Z. This makes Krista feel this way. This is a program that Krista has been running since she was five years old. Okay. Now we see it. Okay. And then we're, you're doing your daily life, right? And then up oh, trigger for program program starts running for Krista to act this certain way. The awareness is there. So there is this point now that the awareness is there of, okay, do I let the program run and I just take this uh, roller coaster ride or do I not engage with the program? Do I just watch the program and watching the program and sitting with the program and detaching from the program causes the program not to run as much and ultimately those identifications you can even think of them as like claws in in your being or whatever these identifications and they slowly they stop they lessen they lessen and then they phew, gone so uh i know i said a lot and i hope this information is helpful for someone out there Again, I only do this channel because I want to share <clears throat> insights of things that have helped me on my journey, and you never know what I'm going to talk about here, 
Uh, and I do find that we have a beautiful community of people that have deepened my understanding by their comments, by their emails, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Namaste. Namaste.